doing this to make it easier for me. Colonial America. Uh, this is what the colonies were like before the Revolutionary War. Talks about, so the opening vignette talks about two brothers, the Robin Johns uh, brothers were slave traders. They were African. They were sons of uh, African royalty. They were captured and enslaved themselves. They eventually talked their way to freedom by convincing people that they were royalty and should not be slaves. And once they returned to Africa, they resumed being a big part of the slave trade. Again, each of you can make up your minds for yourself. I mean, this is straight out of the book, folks. So uh, teaching the book is like I do. Uh, you can read about it in more detail in the book, about how these slave traders became slaves themselves. And as soon as they got their freedom, went right back to the slave trade. Maybe because it was the only thing that they knew. Um, all right, two things got the colonies to grow rapidly. Natural increase in immigration. In other words, natural increase, particularly in the north, the people there were having 8, 10, and 12 children. Immigration, more and more immigrants were coming over. And even from the beginning, the most immigrants went north. All this was to lead to the population of the north becoming bigger and bigger than the population of the south. Most of the immigrants, immigrants went north, and a lot of the reason was slavery. The people felt like, I mean, they were slaves. All right, slavery was legal in all the 13 colonies at this time. But slavery was not common in Pennsylvania, New York, Massachusetts, Connecticut, or Rhode Island. Very uncommon, but slavery was the order of the day in places like South Carolina. In fact, in South Carolina, the slaves outnumbered free whites. This was to become true in Mississippi later. You know, Mississippi was not part of the United States at that time. Um, the colonies became less white and less English as more slaves were brought in. But also, immigrants began to come from uh, German-speaking countries. Now, I say German-speaking because there was no Germany at this time. The area we call Germany consists of a hundred different principalities, dukedoms, counties, and whatever. Uh, the German-speaking, there were about a hundred different countries, That uh, the biggest one being Prussia. But Prussia only had perhaps less than half of all of Germany. But Ireland and Scotland also sent a lot of its people over. Land was abundant and cheap. Labor was scarce. A person who wanted to work could find work. Uh, I want to say this, folks, about finding work. I am highly suspicious of people who go years and years without finding a job. Especially when I go to a restaurant, and every restaurant you go to, and I think everyone, they're begging for help. Now, I mean, I have a master's degree, and yes, I'm college educated, but this school kicked me out of my classes in January 2018. I went to work for a seasonal at Lowe's. I had to support my family. I worked at Lowe's from February, March, April, May, and into June. Then I quit when I got to a summer job here back. Uh, the point I'm making is if you are willing to work, but a lot of persons, they don't find work. Oh, no, I'm too good for that kind of work. I'll tell you something. A lot of these places that pay more will hire people who are already working. All right, I've, I've said my line, so I don't see very many people who like. You, a lot of you appear to not like what I'm saying. I don't blame you. I would not. I mean, I've worked at restaurants myself. I worked at Shoney's for a while. I worked at Crystal for a while. Um, and again, one of my brothers took a job at a, a department store for a while. And the department store, I mean, well, he worked there until he hired in at Armco Steel. He worked at Armco Steel for 30 years and then retired. If he had not gotten a department store job, Armco Steel might not have hired him because Armco Steel liked to hire people who were already employed. Well, if you know Armco Steel, it's a huge steel mill. Very big. Uh, you might not have heard of it, but anyway, he made a career out of that. But uh, labor was scarce, so anybody who wanted to could find job. The free colonials already 
had a higher standard of living than anyone else in the Atlantic world. That includes all of Europe and Africa and Latin America, folks. The Atlantic world, yeah. What do I mean by the Atlantic world? Well, all of this part of the world here. Already the United States, or the Colonials, were on its way to become having the highest standard of living of anybody in the world and the richest. There were several reasons for this, but one of the reasons was colonial peoples were willing to trade and accept paper money. In England, money consisted of gold and silver coins, or, and uh, maybe even some copper coins, but uh, mostly hard money. In the colonies, they would accept IOUs as payment, or banknotes, or bonds. Paper money, essentially, and this was one of the things that helped make the average person in America fairly rich. New England's population initially did not grow as much as the population of, say, New York or Pennsylvania. And part of that was there was not as much land in New England. And, I mean, keep going, New England, small compared to, this area was small, compared to New York and Pennsylvania and New Jersey and Virginia, which had more land, and the Carolinas had a lot of land, but also the strict Puritanism. A lot of people did not want to live in a place where you were expected to dress in dark colored clothes and where you had to be a church member to vote and hold office. So New England did not attract quite as many settlers. And also the Indians discouraged settlers from coming to New England. Now, originally, New Englanders, if a man had this much land and had five sons, the, the daughters were left out, he would divide his land equally among his sons. But what if each of those sons had five sons apiece? You might see the plots get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Eventually, fathers decided, well, I'm going to have to give all my land to my oldest son and tell my younger sons, go find land where you can. Well, then the younger sons began moving farther and farther west. Families who didn't get much land moved. New England farmers usually did not get rich. For one thing, the roads were poor. And when the snows melted, the mud would get literally knee deep, and horse, they, they could not drive their wagons, so uh, livestock oftentimes had to walk to market. New Englanders usually grew a lot of crops on small plots. This was wise, because sometimes due to something, some, a certain crop might hit, be hit by a blight, but uh, they'd grow several crops. Most New England products went to the West Indies. What did go to the West Indies went to Great Britain. Fish, timber, livestock made up a lot of New England's exports. While New Englanders were better off than most Europeans, they were not as well off as the people living in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, or even Maryland. New England did have a small slave population. I mentioned how the slave girl is believed to have influenced these five girls to uh, pretend that they were under the spell of witches, under the influence of witches. The middle colonies, their population grew faster. The people who came in were Scotch, English, Irish, and German. Now, this may surprise you a little bit. The Germans who came in are known as Pennsylvania Dutch. In other words, the, the Pennsylvania Dutch were not from Holland. The Pennsylvania Dutch were called that, and I don't know why. Now, I've already mentioned how the, I lived from the time I was two to the time I was 11 in Pennsylvania. I do have roots in Pennsylvania. I've traced my genealogy back as much as I can. And yes, my genealogy does include some Pennsylvania Dutch people with names like Huth, Kunskert, Zimmerman, 
um, Irish names like Cassane and Garing. Those were Irish names I have in my genealogy also. Dutch, I mean Pennsylvania Dutch, Irish. The name Cunningham is Scotch. Um, the middle colonies then were less English than the New England colonies. And a lot of them came here because they believed they could do better than they could in the old world. And in a lot of cases, they were right. Except for the slaves, and there were a few of them, the people living in Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey, the middle colonies, and Delaware, they lived better than almost anyone else in the whole world. Most people in the middle colonies did not own slaves. And in fact, eventually, slavery was outlawed in these places. But slavery was still legal throughout the Revolutionary War in all 13 of the colonies. Then, beginning with Massachusetts and going from there to Pennsylvania, these northern colonies outlawed it a few at a time. We'll talk in more detail about that later. Philadelphia, trading center, a lot of Quakers became rich from trade. Maybe you've seen the name Quaker on oats, Quaker oats, Quaker State motor oil, supposedly a high brand of motor oil. Uh, Quakers were known for their hard work and their high quality products that they produced. And a lot of, and as the Quakers became rich, they became less spiritual. Take that for whatever it's worth. Um, the South, slavery, in the Chesapeake region, that's Virginia and Maryland, tobacco remained the main crop. In South Carolina, they raised rice and indigo. Georgia. Georgia was the last of the southern colonies, named after King George II, who ruled for many years. Uh, not the one we, that we rebelled against, but named after King George II. All right, here's the part about Georgia, folk. When James Oglethorpe started to, decided to start a Georgia colony, he wanted to create a perfect colony. He did not allow liquor sales in it, did not allow slavery. There, was a, there is a story going around that it started out as a haven for debtors prisoners, or persons who found themselves deep in debt. He would send over here to start life over, but if you actually look at the persons who came over, hardly any debtors actually came. But uh, the story got out that Georgia was a haven for debtors prisoners. It actually was a place where that they would have a perfect colony well, without, with no slavery allowed, with no alcohol allowed, no taverns, not many colonies came. Finally, they legalized slavery and legalized the sale of alcohol, and people began to pour into Georgia. Georgia was supposed to be a buffer state between Florida, which was a Spanish colony, in other words, at one point Georgia was called the land of quail, Q-U-A-L-E. Um, they, they, they were concerned that the Spanish would take over, so the English wanted to have a colony here to serve as a buffer between uh, Georgia and South Carolina. A few wars were fought, including a war called the War of Jenkins' Ear. I'm not going to ask you to learn that, but the War of Jenkins' Ear was where the Spanish cut off a person's ear named Jenkins. And, um, This led to a war. And anyway, James Oglethorpe tried to invade Florida at one time. He was unsuccessful. The Spanish were to keep Florida till 1819. The Middle Passage, that's a term that refers to bringing slaves from Africa to the New World. They, uh, Again, it's called the Middle Passage, just has to do with slavery. Slave women began to bear children. Their white masters encouraged them to do so, reasoning that uh, slave children would be, uh, they wouldn't have to pay for them. So they would get them cheap and then they'd grow up. 
To Southern whites, it seemed impossible to live without slavery, and folk this was true up until 1865. The Southern states, late in Lincoln's term, sent a delegation to Lincoln. Three men, the vice president and two other high up Southern officials went and begged Lincoln and said, you don't understand us, we cannot do without slavery. Uh, we must have it. Lincoln did not listen. Um, people became less religious. Now, this did not remain so. I mean, yes, as wealth increased, it became less religious. But again, these things go in cycles. Eventually, there were revivals that... Uh, uh, anyway, even in Merlin, the majority of colonials were Protestant. And Merlin had started out as a Catholic colony, but even there... Most people were Protestant, except around Baltimore. Preachers began to preach fiery sermons, convicted a whole lot of people. Uh, the, great, the first Great Awakening occurred. Men like Jonathan Edwards and George Whitfield, uh, from whom Whitfield County, Georgia is named after, but Jonathan Edwards and George Whitfield began to... Uh, preached very fiery sermons against sin and got a lot, got the big revival movement started. Um, the French started call the French took over Canada. The Spanish also started colonies. Now, I'm going to jump ahead of the story a little bit. I mean, the Spanish were down here and they started to take over down here. And Daniel Boone settled in Kentucky. When Daniel Boone disagreed with the United States, he actually considered at one point giving Kentucky over to the Spanish. He wound up not doing it, but that's one of the marks against Daniel Boone. I mean, having been born in Kentucky, I've read books about Daniel Boone. But anyway, he settled in Kentucky. Um, okay, I'm about out of time. The, in, these, uh, the, the, the Spanish and the French oftentimes got the Indians on their side to harass the English colonies. And with all respect, both the French and Spanish had reason to fear the extreme numbers. The French did not get many of their people to come over because they did not allow Protestants to come in. And of course, a lot of the French people became Protestant. They did not allow them in. And the uh, Spanish did not tear people, get their people to come into Florida because most of the Spaniards who came went to Latin America instead. So Florida had a terrible time getting settlers. In fact, did not get settlers until the United States took over. And the same thing can be said of Canada. Canada did not have a lot of Europeans until the British took, the, took Canada from the French. Russians. Oh yes, they might say, where did the Russians come in? Simply this. You may or may not know that for many generations, Russians came across Siberia, the Bering Strait that we talked about, and they took Alaska. We got Alaska in 1867 when we purchased it from Russia. But the Russians got Alaska. Then the Russians began encroaching, and they threatened the Spanish colonies here in California and Mexico. The Russians never really got a lot of headway because, I mean, these areas are far removed from Alaska. But uh, they, um, they threatened the Spanish here. And as, keep in mind, the Spanish could not get their people to move into California, New Mexico, and Arizona. And uh, this was quite bothersome to them. They wanted a colony in these regions and simply couldn't get it. All right. Okay, I'm going to stop here. The week just began and the week is over already. Now everybody have a good weekend. Uh, we have to finish chapter 6 on Monday before the test. So uh, everybody be studying. Don't wait till the night before to study. Start going over the material now. Have a good weekend.